Welcome, today we're diving into the frequently asked question, hyperlapse versus time lapse, what is the difference? Unlocking the mystery, why it's become so confusing, and it should be a fun topic. So now you're probably wondering, what's the fuss about hyperlapse versus time lapse? Well, let's shed some light on the actual definitions of time lapse and hyperlapse, what makes them different, and then some exciting subgenres that are gonna pique your curiosity and give you some inspiration and ideas to try out on your own, like flow motion, pixelation, hyperzoom, and time slices. Picture this, hyperlapse and time lapse are like twins, but not identical twins. They share similarities, but one crucial difference that sets them apart. Time lapse and hyperlapse are film techniques designed to solve the problem of how to visually show time changes, something that we can't see with our eyes alone. For example, I can't watch a plant go from seed to bloom by just staring at it. So how does it work? By definition, a time lapse is a video made up of hundreds, sometimes thousands of photos taken over a long amount of time to help us see something change. In short, it's turning your camera into a time machine because it allows us to see time pass or lapse. Get it? It's typically done on a tripod or a motorized slider that might move as little as a couple inches or as much as a few feet. Main point here is a time lapse doesn't move or it moves just a little. Okay, so what's a hyperlapse? It's a time lapse where the camera moves a much bigger distance. Think of it like a special effect bringing the audience through the scene. It can be shot handheld, on a tripod, or even on a gimbal, but the main differentiation is simply the fact that a hyperlapse is where the camera is also moving. That is it, it's that simple. So why all the fuss and confusion? In the iPhone camera app, it has a time-lapse function. In the Samsung or Android world, it's called hyperlapse. So what's the difference? In that situation, there is absolutely no difference. They both do the same thing. The reason why Samsung calls it hyperlapse is because it's in a mobile phone. It moves, it's mobile, hence hyperlapse, because it's moving, it's a time-lapse that's moving a great distance. And doing it on the phone is a great way to get stable hyperlapses very quickly. But if you wanna get super technical and anal about it, if you set your Android phone in a fixed spot and record while you're in hyperlapse, mode, that is technically a time-lapse because the camera is not moving. And if you grab your iPhone and move while shooting in time-lapse mode, the result is a hyperlapse because you're shooting a time-lapse that's moving. Hopefully that makes sense. If you're liking this video, please subscribe or like the video. It'll really help with the algorithm and I could use that. Fun fact, the first hyperlapse ever shot is called Pacer and it was made in 1995 by a guy named Guy Roland using all film cameras. It's absolutely wild and really cool and I recommend watching it. There's a link in the description. So that's it. A time lapse is stationary, a hyperlapse is moving. It's really that simple. So now let's walk through some subgenres of the time lapse and hyperlapse world that are really, really exciting. First is flow motion, a term coined by Rob Whitworth, which aims to turn the camera into a character moving around the scene, blending seamlessly between time lapse, hyperlapse, video, sometimes slow motion. Seeing this is so cool. It's actually what inspired me to pick up a camera. Still to this day, it is my favorite time lapse creator. If you're interested in time-lapse work, do yourself a favor and watch arguably the best time-lapse film ever made called Dubai Flow Motion. Another one, another really cool one is Barcelona Go. So another really cool technique is Hyperzoom by Jeff Tompkinson, where he's blending between multiple time-lapses of the same scene at different focal lengths. And then he's compiling them in After Effects or another program, editing it in a way where the camera is kind of flying around different locations. It's really fun. And I have a tutorial on how to do it and you can implement it into your shots. It's actually really, really fun to do. Another one that I have really loved lately is called Pixelation. In short, it's a form of stop motion when you use real people that you animate between each frame. I went down a rabbit hole recently and I learned about Norman McLaren, who as far as I know is the pioneer of this technique. And he even won an Academy Award using this technique in a short film called Neighbors. It's only an eight minute film, it's really awesome. I'm slowly doing more and more of this in my work and, and it just has such a fun feel to it. Lastly, another fun and easy one is called Time Slice. This is a fun technique where you just slice up the time lapse in different shapes or patterns and get this cool time lapse where you see all the different shades of a sunset or sunrise. I have a free premiere template and you can download it and just insert your time lapse and it'll time slice it for you. For best results, you're gonna wanna shoot a holy grail time lapse. And that's it folks. The hyperlapse versus time lapse is really just differentiated by movement. The movement makes it hyper. All right, well, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.